Hi everybody, my name is Tom Jouse. Welcome to Blend That Film. Welcome to another episode of Blend That Film, the show in which we take a look at using the free open source software Blender to produce some professional looking special effects for your DIY films. Now in today's episode we're going to be looking at an effect which might not necessarily be the most exciting effect in the world, but it's an effect which is going to help sell your other effects. It's going to convince the viewer that your digital elements are there in the scene, and it's going to add a little bit of life and energy to your shot as well. So let's take a look at Camera Shake. Take a look at this shot. As you can see, the camera shake really adds to the sense that jets are flying low over the camera. Now take a look at a shot without the camera shake added and just note how it doesn't compare in the slightest. When working inside the video sequence editor, the first thing that you need to do is to make sure that your render settings match that of your source footage. This is especially important here as if you don't do it first then your sound will be out of sync. Though for me, I'm working with an image sequence and so sound will be dealt with separately. So switch to the video sequence editor and change the type of view to show both the sequencer and the preview windows. Then split the timeline and change the new window to the graph editor. With your mouse held inside the sequence area, hit Shift A to add your image sequence or video. If you're using an image sequence, you need to select all of the images by pressing the A key. Hit Add Image Strip and it will load. You will now see that your image sequence has been added. Hit Shift S to snap the sequence to the green timeline marker which should be at frame 0. Change your sequence length to match your footage and then press N to bring up the properties panel. Ensuring that you're at frame 1 of the sequence and with the sequence strip selected, hit Shift A. This time select Effect Strip and choose a Transform Strip. This will add a new strip exactly the same length as your current sequence. Scroll down the Properties panel to find the Effect Strip properties and check Uniform Scale. Insert a keyframe into the X and Y position inputs and the rotation input simply by hovering over the inputs and hitting the I key. As you can see, the Properties panel in the Graph Editor has now become active. Select the Translate X Transform, then in the Properties panel scroll down to the bottom and add a Noise Modifier. Set the scale to 16 and the strength to 1.5. Now do the same for both the translate Y and rotation transforms, but changing the values very slightly each time. For me, I chose anywhere between 16 and 22 for the scale, and anywhere between 1.2 and 1.5 for the strength. Just make sure the values are different each time. If we hit play, you can see that the effect is working. Unfortunately, now we have a bit of a problem. We have these ugly black edges where the image is moving. So the easiest method to fix this is to take a uniform scale and to just punch it up until it disappears. For me that value was 1.05, so not a lot really. However, this will sacrifice a small amount of your image quality and will mean that you will have to account for this whilst you're shooting. If you want to add additional shake or change the value of the shake at any given point, you can do this simply by adding further modifiers and then use the restrict range values to control when each modifier affects the video. So for my video, I selected the modifier affecting the translate Y value and set the range to start at frame 1 and to end at frame 71. Then I added a second modifier that would affect the frames 72 to 95 and I pushed the translate Y value up to create the violent shake as the jets flew past. Alright guys, thanks very much for watching. Um, I know it's been a long time that I've been away and um, I know what you're thinking, he comes back with a tutorial on camera shake. Yes, I know, not the greatest effect in the world, but it's something that I really wanted to take a look at because I think it's a very useful effect, especially if you're on your own, like I am right now, uh, staring into a tripod, uh, to a camera on a tripod even. And uh, I think it really helps out the, the beginner, um, so um, I really hope it's been useful to at least a few of you out there. Um, and uh, next time I'm definitely going to be looking at something a little more advanced and uh, something that a lot of you have been asking to look at. So until next time, thanks very much for watching.